Welcome to ITC alumni talk number 35. We have with us today, uh, only the ready is a PD pass out in uh, 2003. So Murli claims, I mean, he, I don't know whatever way you introduce him. I think it's a, a very, very interesting uh, combination of, a, of an architect, uh, a designer, a practitioner who has tremendous focus of uh, putting his practice into uh, one line of thinking and very well integrated. So he has been running this uh, studio uh, called the Design Circle in Bangalore. I mean, he has a studio which, to my understanding, uh, is, is engaged in projects. And he also has a not-for-profit attached to this called Thinking Hands. So for the sake of communication, you may separate them as two, but I think mentally he sees them as one together in the sense that uh, he doesn't distinguish between uh, projects that he does as, as projects for earning and uh, the project that he does where through his thinking hands he is engaged in uh, teaching the craft of working with wood to professionals, students, uh, to promote this whole idea of what it means to have a product done through wood. So he, he, he actually gets the participants, get sensitive to all that it takes to make a product, uh, a wooden product. So he, in that sense, has a belief that anything that is done uh, using a tool, he doesn't see them as a tool being used, he sees as an extension of an individual's idea and thought. That uh, tool becomes part of it and what is very important is the kind of sensitivity and sensibility with which you do what you set out to do. Very, very, I mean the engagement with Murli over the last uh, few, whatever few weeks that we have been talking to has been extremely inspiring. And today is chosen to talk about, not so much about the studio. Uh, of course, we should have a separate session on that. Uh, but he is going to talk about the project that he has recently uh, taken up, which is uh, about uh, uh, creating, uh, I don't know, I will use the word artwork, but uh, Murli doesn't see it as an artwork. Uh, it's, it's an artwork that, uh, he has put together uh, to for a public installation and the venue i think is still being in a discussion but to my knowledge it's most likely this artwork will be installed in uh, the metro station of ngo um, but what he is going to talk about in the product the process that he went through and uh, some of the driving ideas behind this uh, project and also what it actually takes to to do something like this. And, uh, and the one that reverberates uh, in his thought is doing a lot of these things, uh, how it has shaped his thinking uh, as a designer in looking at the work that he does and the meaning behind the work he does is very, very interesting to note. So uh, through his words, through his exchange, I'm sure that we will uh, find a very inspiring engagement uh, and uh, also i want to add to to his introduction that uh, the studio he runs along with his wife ritu uh, who is also from idc i'm hoping only that she is also uh, participating in the session and uh, very interestingly it's it's a the the studio is not just a studio done for, for as a profession but he has his wife with him, he has his two children uh, who is also part of the studio. So that way, it's it's, it's a very, very uh, uh, unique uh, professional who has got the family also along, tagged along <laughs> in, his, in, his, uh, in his mission. So that's very inspiring to know. And with this, uh, I would like to uh, hand over the session to Murli. And uh, Murli, the session is yours. We are eager. We are all eager to listen to you. Please go ahead. 
So, uh, thank you, uh, Nimish and Ravi, and uh, good evening, one and all. It's been a uh, pleasure that uh, I have been given this uh, platform to uh, share some of my, uh, some of the work what we have uh, done recently. And I'm really delighted to be part of this uh, platform, the uh, alumni talks. Uh, till date, we have had some very uh, amazing uh, thought sharing and discussions have happened. Now, uh, this project, what we are going to uh, talk about is one of our recent projects. As uh, uh, Ravi mentioned, uh, we are just going to talk about and share the journey of it and the process of it. So uh, in terms of scale and things, it's not a very huge thing. And the reason why I wanted to, uh, I, when I was discussing with Ravi, I didn't know whether I can call this as an artwork or uh, things. It's just uh, work that has come through uh, the effort of uh, a lot of uh, people. So I would leave it to the audience to uh, decide whether it's an artwork or not. So uh, let me uh, start off. So, we started our uh, design journey in uh, 2003 by establishing uh, Enzo Furniture. After we came out of uh, uh, IDC, both myself and Ritu, we started Enzo Furniture. Now, Enzo is a Zen circle in Japanese. Now, it's an open-ended circle uh, formed by a single brush stroke, which shows one's state of mind at that point of time. It's open, but it's complete. It's open to new opportunities and it's ever growing, which in our case is about getting into uh, newer experiences, coming out of older ones and getting deeper into existing ones. Now, in 2004, we uh, started uh, Design Circle as a uh, design uh, studio come production unit. And in uh, 2021, we started uh, thinking hats. As uh, Ravi mentioned, uh, both were formed with uh, Ritu as a co founder. Small correction both Design Circle and Thinking Hands are supposed to make profit. Till now, we've not seen anything in the green. So, but we've enjoyed the journey. Uh, both the logos, what you're seeing, uh, was designed by our very own Sindhu Kulkarni of Tasset. The work that uh, I'm going to present uh, today uh, has its uh, origin in three previous projects of ours, both academic and uh, professional. It's the reflected knowledge from these projects that went on into making the 50 woven frames possible. Now, the first uh, project, uh, what I'm referring to uh, is a part of the uh, foundation workshops at uh, the uh, school where I'm uh, part of, CMR University School of Architecture. The uh, second project is uh, something we did it as a project uh, with uh, school kids at uh, Ikea Schools, Mangalore. And the third project, what I will be referring to is a studio what I was part of in uh, uh, Shristi School of Art, Design and Technology called uh, Second Thoughts. Now, coming to the first one, the foundation workshops at School of Architecture. These uh, foundation workshops, when we started the school, have uh, uh, taken the place of what was uh, in the other schools. It's called as a model making workshop. Now. The whole uh, idea of this uh, foundation workshop instead of a model making workshop was that 
the model making workshop teaches you about the uh, tools to do a model which supports your other studios but uh, here the foundation workshop are enabler studios uh, enabler courses for the design and construction uh, studios which happen in progressive uh, stages during the formative years now this uh, these uh, foundation workshops uh, focus on materials tools methods processes and we keep constantly emphasizing uh, systems and systems thinking at every level so that's the primary uh, difference uh, what uh, we have been able to do in the foundation workshops so the assignments what i'm sharing are uh, something to do with uh, uh, weaving where uh, students through the act of uh, weaving they uh, were attempting to understand texture color patterns geometry and so on the output at the end was just a means to understand one or more of the uh, previously mentioned basic design elements in most of the cases we had uh, kind of uh, frozen the size of the frame what you are seeing these three frames were uh, done by the batch of uh, 2016 they were massive actually it was 3 feet by 4 feet frames i uh, really have to appreciate uh, my students uh, patience when they have filled that entire frame this is uh, uh, i'm uh, these are i'm very possessive about these thing i still have them uh, in my uh, office at the school and uh, i hope they will remain for quite some time so uh, what we had encouraged uh, students to use uh, textile waste apart from uh, different colored threads to explore the possibilities as a source of color and variety uh in uh, in another semester since i told it's an ongoing uh, process in the uh, studios in another semester we had uh, uh tried to explore color itself through weaving so what we had done was we had uh, shown some uh, movie clips to students and we encouraged them to uh, weave the uh, color patterns what they see in the movie maybe uh, a cowboy movie what kind of colors do they see and bring it in the color palette what they weave interesting results came out of it so these are some of the uh, works what came out and uh, believe me none of the students nor i have any experience in uh, uh, weaving as such so uh, the first attempt when i did it it was uh, through videos in youtube got a frame made in the studio and i had uh, started off that's when i realized how much time it takes to weave so it was an amazing uh, learning but it was something very addictive this whole act of weaving so if someone has not tried it i would really urge you to uh, try it it goes beyond all your experiences now the second project uh, uh involved string art now this is a very common uh, uh thing uh, which uh, it's used uh, all of us must have done it in our craft classes one time or the other but uh, what is interesting is we took that uh, very common thing and uh, we came up with the thing because we had to involve uh, students from grade 6 to 10 at uh, ikya schools uh because uh, in their curriculum uh, they started uh, something called as a makery where uh, uh, students were involved in uh, making activities once in a week uh, one or two hours they wanted to wanted them to be involved in making activities so this was part of uh, that uh, exercise so one of the important requirements in this project was uh, a certain assured output had to be uh, gotten where in spite of involving kids across age groups with varying tool and material handling abilities some kind of a uh, output uh, and uh, we need to ensure it so it was again uh, a very uh, simplified approach where uh, 
uh, I had to look at what material I can uh, bring in. So MDF was one of the uh, cost effective and uh, easiest uh, material to work with what uh, we found. So uh, 200 by 200 mm uh, uh, MDF pieces were uh, cut in the studio. Also, the sizes were arrived at uh, based on how the kids can handle it and how minimum wastage I can get out of the cutting patterns. So, uh, and each kid was given one uh, board. So, and along with it, uh, they were given uh, laser cut profiles, uh, templates basically, which we had uh, given it to the teachers. And we had uh, taken one session with the teachers as to uh, what needs to be done. So the uh, templates were designed in uh, uh, such a way that uh, the uh, students, they had to use a hammer, use hammer and nails. So we had done it in uh, such a way so that uh, it's easy, you get a curve when you uh, hammer the uh, nails. One of the objectives of this exercise was to increase uh, hand-eye coordination uh, while uh, nailing and uh, while the students were uh, doing it. Over the years, what we have noticed is that uh, it's one of our surprising uh, findings, but it's a sad, surprising find. Okay. Uh, because uh, when we uh, give kids these kind of activities, we uh, suddenly find out that kids have not been exposed to uh, any of these kind of uh, tinkering activities or use of uh, fundamental uh, tools. Uh, like what, uh, at least in uh, our age, we must have somewhere fiddled around with the hammer, nails and pliers, wires. And we have broken a lot of things. And uh, that has uh, taught us in turn a lot of uh, things. So uh, that is uh, something somewhere our uh, system is uh, uh, hopefully going to get back is uh, what we are uh, hoping. So we had demonstrated these uh, things to the teachers. So teachers in turn demonstrated to the uh, students. And uh, after the nailing was done, students, uh, first they painted uh, the base in their choice of colors. And you can see the uh, choice of color palette. So uh, if you look at these tiles separately, they're wild. So, and then after, uh, painting, they use the template, uh, draw a curve and start nailing it. Then they bring in a uh, thread of uh, different colors and uh, whatever random pattern they do, uh, because of the way uh, the geometry happens, you get uh, some meaningful patterns. We have not gone deep into how these patterns arrive and all those things. That's too much of math for, at least for me. So, but uh, some of the uh, important takeaways from this project for us were the importance of modularity. So when uh, we started, as I mentioned, I was looking at the cutting patterns where no uh, wastage came out. But here the modularity and grid came in handy to uh, unite and handle the uh, chaos of color and pattern that came with multiple users. Now, until unless you take out single tile and check out about how things have been done it just blends so well with the overall composition it does not matter how wild someone has used a pink or a blue or any of these colors and that's the uh, the result what you see is a testimony of that uh, thing so and another thing is the simplicity in the process uh, like we had set out to do it assured a certain uh, uniformity and variety in the final output now, depending on what kind of framing I want to do and where I want to mount it up, I can use the number of tiles. So what you see, the three panels are, in fact, uh, used in the uh, head office of uh, Akia. Uh, every time I go, I click pictures. Uh, I'm not uh, somehow uh, still fully satisfied with the kind of picture. But every time I go there, I click pictures of this. The third project. What I would like to uh, uh, share with you all is uh, what uh, we did in, uh, what I did in Srishti called uh, Second uh, Thoughts. It was in uh, 2021. 
the uh, students who had uh, signed up for this uh, it was a making oriented uh, course the uh, students who had uh, signed up for this came from different disciplines which included uh, industrial art and practice communication uh, human centered design some of the students who had taken a signed up had uh, prior exposure to uh, some uh, making related activities and for some it was an absolutely new and exploratory uh, experience now the objectives of this studio was about re reimagining and reinterpreting the historically taken for granted materials communications theories practices and processes it was during the studio it was about developing the ability to manage time resources and methods to arrive at a final finished outcome to develop an eye for detail using appropriate techniques methods and material and translate ideas into tangible outcomes so and they also had to develop this ability to identify patterns within systems and uh, services which were apparent and beyond the obvious that's why the were uh, the title second thoughts okay they need to look at things which were beyond the obvious and to have the capability to make connection between seemingly unconnected components so for this studio what uh, i had uh, taken up the building demolition and associated industry as the primary source for the uh, studio so uh, before uh, this studio uh, actually i had some really really uh, fundamental challenges i had to uh, address uh, with my audience on an immediate basis so because of their varied uh, background they had to be really prepped by introducing them to the uh, very basic and critical aspects which in the architecture school we really take it for granted as to what is the importance of drawing what is scale what are measurements along with introducing them to different uh, elements of building itself uh, because these students are not from that background it was uh, something which had to be introduced so uh, the first week uh, it was a five week project the first week uh, completely spent on this aspect of uh, making them sketch making them draw making them understand scale and all these things and uh, then the students had to uh, visit the building demolition industry uh, some of them could actually visit uh, things when uh, uh, the building demolition was happening or otherwise uh, they were to go to uh, uh, where uh, the yards where uh, the demolished material was uh, being sold they had to identify them and uh, uh, document them so during the process they got to understand their availability types quality cost uh, most of these uh, objects uh, when uh, they visited was uh, uh, around uh, doors windows grills so shutters handrails and things like that which is what we usually see apart from some of the white goods uh, white goods and uh, liquor bottles and uh, uh chandeliers and all those things so that uh, is what uh, part of their uh, was the initial journey was so as an output the students had to uh, come up with a stool that uh, utilizes the existing uh, material in the best possible way one of the thing what the students were encouraged is to retain Uh, some uh, some or most of the character in the existing material they had to tell a story uh, by including all the existing features which can include uh, the joinery the rebates uh, with the grills the hinges and things like that uh, if not at least retain the uh, weathered character of the thing so i'll just take you through some of the uh, works and uh, it was amazing that some of the students had stretched themselves uh, uh this thing so that uh, they want they went out of their comfort zone 
Now, this, uh, I'll uh, just talk about this example because this uh, student, she was the uh, uh, topper of the studio. She wanted to do a stool which uh, will collapse. So what you see is it's a plus which you pull out because of the spring, it will collapse and it, the whole stool will uh, become uh, collapsed. And she uh, went through the whole process of knowing the mechanics and uh, took help from the uh, studio uh, uh, instructors and uh, she got the material. If you see there are uh, the kind of workmanship is not uh, that uh, admirable but if you look at the background of the student who's made it this is commendable because uh, uh, i'm the one who keeps uh, always uh, stressing about uh, workmanship so but uh, i really appreciated the student and learned from her quite a bit all kind of materials came into uh, picture here uh, if you see for this uh, stool the uh, uh, core cut uh, concrete became the uh, one of the main elements and the tire became the seat and uh, it was a lot of uh, surprise for students when they brought the painted uh, frames and once they got it planed suddenly they could uh, see and uh, realize that this is what timber is about this surprise is uh, hidden and uh, they started uh, trying to understand the uh, species. What is the difference between this and that? How do they behave? And uh, things like that. How do they behave to the tools? So uh, that's how the process uh, went on. Now, uh, they started understanding why they're using the material after quite some time. Because initially, including the uh, workshop people at Srishti, uh, they were not used to seeing any of these uh, uh, materials which are old windows and doors coming and becoming something else. They were always used to using fresh cut pieces or the pieces which have come from the sawmill freshly cut from the log and they were used to uh, working with those. Uh, suddenly it was also a disruption for them. So initially uh, there was a certain non-cooperation also from their side but then once they started Seeing students uh, coming up with uh, ideas like this, uh, then it uh, took off. And in any of the workshops or uh, making projects, this is uh, with experience I can tell always that jittery uh, vibes are there in the beginning. And as it goes, it uh, things fall in place. So, uh, what we addressed as one of the objectives in the Second Thoughts uh, studio was about the possibilities of reusing and uh, repurposing uh, materials and their importance as a source of uh, raw materials. This, I believe, is a hugely unexplored uh, area where uh, resources need to be tapped and utilized. But I also believe that these needs to be uh, looked at by involving students with an entrepreneurial uh, mindset and lens rather than just uh, purely academic projects. Because uh, as uh, designers, uh, we've always been taught uh, in our uh, studios or uh, in the schools that uh, even today in our projects, uh, most of us as architects, we uh, want to use the latest available materials. We don't see how much resources we've already spent, how much is lying there to be utilized again. And uh, there's huge commercial value in these. It's just about uh, working out uh, as a system. Now, uh, I believe this is just a beginning and uh, there's so much possibility. This is where uh, uh, I believe for designers to come there's a lot of role in these kind of uh, things, especially in a context like ours. We see waste in a different way than the West sees it. So uh, now just uh, taking through some more uh, uh, works what uh, came out here. And one thing which I will uh, uh, make a concluding statement at the end of this presentation is about the uh, 
aesthetics what comes out of this approach uh, cannot be benchmarked with the rest of the way we uh, do things and that's something i would like to uh, mention about uh, so all these uh, variations came out and a lot of uh, trials were made uh, failures were seen so the students uh, also it's important that students realize the failures and uh, whatever learnings were picked up from it now coming to uh, the uh, 50 woven frames the actual uh, presentation of today now to tell the 50 woven frames were uh, commissioned to commemorate the 50th founding day of institute of indian interior designers triple id so triple id is uh, one organization i've been uh, uh, involved in uh, one way or the other from at least from past uh, seven to eight years so uh, this uh, 50 woven frames were to be uh, unveiled during the uh, uh, design uru 3.0 at the rangoli metro center uh, bangalore the unveiling of the project was also on the craft day since the uh, week-long festival was based on different uh, themes initially uh, during our discussions uh, it was uh, to be uh, done at uh, at the venue in a workshop mode in a day. Uh, though this approach would have involved maximum participation by the public, it would also have been difficult to ensure a certain uh, quality of output uh, as in terms of workmanship. Now, as I mentioned, this is something which in all my work I'm pretty uh particular about the uh, workmanship uh, needs to uh, be something which you can uh, keep looking at it again and again so so what uh, we uh, did was this uh, project we came out with the thing that we'll have a uh, combination of making 50 frames with material where uh, we're going to reuse the material okay uh, in both ways so this is where uh, the first presentation what i had with the triple id team was as a discussion about the possibilities uh, weaving in a frame modularity and uh, how we uh, which is the final place it's going to be installed and how can we achieve variety how can we get in consistency how can uh, uh, different materials be bought in and uh, it was an amazing uh, discussion because I was uh, speaking to a team which had uh, that kind of uh, sensitivity and sensibilities. It was uh, in the first meeting, we agreed upon this whole uh, approach that we are going to do 50 frames. So that uh, set uh, me thinking about uh, the brass tacks now. So for that, the uh, the screen on, on the screen what you're seeing is uh, something uh, which was uh, to put across for textile waste. Now this is a huge, huge uh, thing apart from uh, the uh, building industry, textile industry and plastic uh, industry are the biggest uh, landfillers. So it's estimated that a million tons of textile are thrown away every year. Most of these coming from household uh, sources. So this roughly amounts to 0.8 kg of textile waste per capita. We are talking about uh, 1.3 billion people. Okay. So just imagine the uh, amount of textile waste that is going into landfills. Uh, this, I believe, is high time we start questioning things with numbers. And that's when uh, we realize the impact. Now are uh, uh, the uh, Environmental Protective Agency uh, uh, in the US uh, uh, like clearly puts across that Americans generate 16 million tons of textile waste. So we are uh, 1 million, those guys are 16 million. So uh, of this, uh, only 2.5 million tons of uh, clothing is actually recycled or repurposed. So there's quite a bit to work on this as a 
uh, it can be uh, one uh, design school itself which starts and uh, brings out a whole uh, new breed of uh, designers who can take up this as their primary work so what uh, how we went about uh, this is this was the uh, drawing i had uh, taken because i had done uh, simple autocad uh, drawings to the size of the frame i uh, tried out various uh, sizes and quickly started bringing in some color so what i saw from this image was that the kind of uh, weaving which we are talking about it's uh, going to have really wild uh, colors coming in because it's very difficult to say let's do the whole weaving with white or shades of white kind of a thing so if you give it to 50 people 50 people have 50 different ways of looking at color so we had to accommodate that so we made the uh, uh, cad drawings for it and uh, i got the first uh, frame done with uh, uh, some of the uh, old uh, window frames what i had in my uh, studio so the initial idea was that uh, we wanted to use all the features what is existing in the uh, frames and uh, uh, door frames, including the rebates and the paint. We just wanted to leave it and uh, do it. So when we uh, uh, looked at the thing, when I got it out of the studio, this is what was the first piece what we uh, made in the studio. So. Uh, somehow, uh, though it uh, ticked all the boxes of using the uh, existing frame, I was not convinced about the end product in terms of a certain consistency what is going to happen in 50 frames. So uh, that is when uh, I had to uh, uh, take a call to uh, let go of uh, that part of it where I'll be using all the existing features in the uh, uh, material and uh, concentrate on uh, uh, bringing in simplicity in joinery and uh, simplicity in uh, uh, using the uh, thing so that we can achieve better finish. So what you see in the uh, picture is uh, where I have made slots for uh, making a lap joint. It's a very very fundamental and uh, a basic joint uh, what we come across. It's just a lab joint you can make out still the uh, variety in uh, colors and uh, uh, textures what you see because it's come from different uh, frames which have been uh, uh, exposed to weather differently which have been seasoned in a very different way and that is how the frame turned out to be and as i was telling uh, we concentrated more on the joinery part of it and uh, put in all the effort but uh, was needed. So, what happened? The joinery, what you see, the first on the extreme right, that became the first starting point of ornament here in this particular uh, thing. So, uh, then we uh, brought in uh, the molding, what you see here. That was another touch. Then we uh, had some laser etching done on the frame. So these touches on each frame started becoming an ornament when frames uh, started coming together. So that's how the ornament uh, started building up the whole thing. So uh, then, uh, in fact, each frame, uh, we uh, did the complete uh, nailing for the uh, warp and uh, we tied the thread and uh, uh, started distributing the frame. So that's how the final finish came up, the workmanship what I'm talking about. So that's how uh, till uh, I tell that this is made from a uh, old frame, uh, which was a door or a window, you cannot make out because uh, there's no way a compromise in the workmanship or the quality of the output. So this is where I see possibility for uh, value addition uh, through design. Then the exploration with the uh, textile uh, uh, waste started. There was no dearth for this raw material. So we, we just had to ask at uh, home, 
our colleagues themselves went and bought all their uh, 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 what uh, screens, old kurtas, bed sheets, you name it. Every variety of uh, uh, textile uh, waste was there. One of the important things what uh, I came up for uh, the uh, thing which if I go back to the previous uh, drawing, uh, to unite the whole uh, colors, uh, I came up with this uh, point of bringing in braiding the textile. So this uh, became the horizontal lines. So we, uh, when we started exploring, we thought we'll use at least four to five braided uh, uh, textiles in each of the frame, so that when you place all of them together, they become horizontal lines. So they are the connectors. The thing so uh, you can uh, uh, see the way these things go as horizontal lines across. But when all of them came together, that made the uh, difference in the overall uh, uh, composition because this uh, like was acting as to, to bringing together the uh, wild and seemingly impossible color combinations. So. After this, the frames were uh, given to uh, users and uh, we had uh, explained the uh, uh, fundamentals to the uh, different uh, users. And uh, uh, since the uh, warp was already there, uh, they started exploring the things. And uh, after some time, we started uh, receiving the things back. So. Uh, what uh, we all also requested is that uh, the weavers had to uh, take a, a picture of their thing and send it back to us. The weavers background, if you see the weavers of the 50 frames, they included people of all ages and backgrounds ranging from 10 years to 75 years. The uh, simple and the kind of fail proof details that we had uh, worked out brought in a certain amount of confidence in uh, participants to go for it. Even someone who had never uh, done any kind of weaving in their life had no problem in completing the task. So because we had already all the elements in place, the uh, warp was uh, set to a right tension and given and uh, uh, we had uh, in fact made some uh, demo videos also. So once they started uh, sending the uh, pictures, we uh, used all the pictures to uh, create uh, posters. So this is how the uh, weavers sent the thing. And some of them who had done more than one frame sent more than one picture. So we had totally uh, made close to 70 frames so that we thought we'll uh, select 50 frames out of it. So. Uh, <coughs> so we had uh, done the recce of the venue to prepare for the installation including ways to mount the uh, frames, type of fixing details and whatnot. Uh, every time we went to the site, the exact location of the final installation constantly used to move around. Uh, due to various factors because the venue was an absolute hub of activity uh, during the Design Uru week because uh, many of the Bangaloreans were, uh, after a long time, they were literally coming out uh, to just experience MG Road. And uh, uh, that was the kind of thing, but we really loved the uh, atmosphere uh, there. So. After getting these, uh, then uh, we started the work of uh, composing them. Because this was a, a task uh, when my colleagues from the School of Architecture uh, came in, they came in immediately after the first uh, prototype frame was ready. So throughout, they were like uh, super enthusiastic in the whole uh, project. So we spread them around in our lobby and we started composing them and uh, figured out parallelly figured out details how to uh, mount them and then we came up with the idea of a simple uh, 
uh, ladder frame so that it was it would be uh, easily transported to the venue in the porter uh, tempo but that uh, time what we spent in composing and things uh, actually made a lot of uh, difference so we did the ladder frames like this and uh, we packed them and we sent them to the venue because the triple id team had asked us that uh, uh, it will be uh, very important to uh, have a surprise reveal at the site during the installation. Uh, so each of these frames, we pack them individually and uh, send them to the site. So all you could uh, make out is it's just one uh, panel kind of a thing. So nothing was uh, revealed. So uh, we also had to come out with a, a way how to uh, hide it. So this is part of the poster what uh, we had done where uh, we were talking about uh, coming together and celebration of design material and uh, craft so this is the poster what i was uh, talking about where uh, it was put up at the venue this is all what was revealed uh, before the unveiling so it was giving a gist of it and the 50 was maybe a clue uh, that 50 such frames will come out what came out also because of the uh, installation was uh, surprising uh, pieces like this. This was done by one of my colleague uh, Viral. What uh, uh, she was, she's also crazy about uh, weaving in the real sense. So what she had done was she had uh, cut strips with all the words in it, and she started weaving, and she came up with this. Uh, panel which is about uh, uh, 600 by 600 so uh, this is uh, this is something which i've uh, treasured in my uh, office now and that's the kind of intricacy uh, which came out uh, uh, in this thing now this is my team uh, to uh, introduce my team from the uh, right hand side i have my uh, three boys from the studio rakesh uh, Manju and Yelumale. Then we have my colleagues uh, from the architecture school. Two of them are missing here. Uh, Ashwat, Renuka, Chandra, uh, Pratik, and uh, our office uh, assistant Timapa and uh, our uh, uh, Ganesh Badur, the security, and yours truly. Uh, and this is before we left for the venue. And uh, the moment the thing left and uh, the, some of the colleagues were ready to receive them at the venue and the entire operations in the venue was handled by another of my uh, colleague the super active uh, uh, akshara varma so she took care of uh, things at the uh, venue and this is how we had put up the surprise because there were some uh, sarees which were to be given to an ngo so we used all these sarees. They also started forming uh, the colors and patterns which were uh, as uh, important as our uh, work itself. So uh, this was the venue what we had got. So we had to uh, kind of uh, make do with whatever uh, surprising elements uh, came on the spot. The uh, what the what you see was uh, something which we didn't ask for but it was part of the venue so uh, as uh, true designers we had to make use of what we had and the whole process started by uh, understanding the uh, um, i was explaining uh, to the audience about how we approached it the chief guest for the evening was uh, miss uh, jaya jethi and uh, rest of the audience was uh, of course uh, Bangaloreans and uh, triple id uh, team who had flown in from across the country now it was amazingly refreshing to listen to uh, miss uh, jaya jaitley's uh, passionate talk about her involvement with crafts and uh, craftsperson one thing i still remember of her talk that day was when she mentioned that if you uh, really want to uh, involve traditional craftsperson in the mainstream development, 
whenever you use a craft start using the crafts person's name uh, so that will really bring in the recognition to them as what she told which i really believe that's a, a very important uh, thing to do i'll just take you through some of the uh, images i hope i'm on time ravi yeah we are, we we may not have too many time for questions but go ahead i mean you yeah finish off the way you want so uh, look, quite a few people visited the thing that's the uh, installation we had the uh, uh, metro md uh, visit the site and uh, we discussed about the possibilities and my colleagues were so thrilled to take a picture with uh, jaya ji and you can see all of them uh, grinning that way and some more uh, images at the uh, venue uh, we have uh, architect uh, dinesh verma in the audience who was one of the driving forces for the whole uh, triple id design uru and that's what we had uh, finally uh, put up yes so i would like to uh, uh conclude by uh, putting across uh, the two primary issues that came together seamlessly to be addressed and highlighted as part of the project were impact of the building industry on the landfills and the magnitude of textile waste being generated and circulated around another important part which i had uh, started to mention in the beginning was uh, aesthetics of and for addressing concerns of the ecology and ethical resource usage will not be the same as using virgin resources in the conventionally accepted norms of production and consumption if we use these kind of materials the aesthetic what is going to come out is going to be totally uh, different so we need to accept it the way it, they come out the criteria of scaling up might not be satisfied always in the way we have come to define the terms growth profit etc so both the material the message was about showcasing the possibilities through the judicious use and uh, of material resources this is without any compromise in quality of the quality or the workmanship this is something i mentioned and uh, showcase how it, uh, it was possible now i'm not sure if the audience after looking at the uh, work uh, realized anything about what we intended to but i thought it was important uh, we approach it uh, that way so i would uh, close uh, here and uh, i want to get feedback from the audience what they felt and about the whole thing sure that's that's humongous amount of work uh, murli uh, so let us use this time uh, maybe we don't have too much but uh, probably uh, maximum two to three questions anybody anyone has a question or a comment okay uh, before they probably frame your question there is one from my end um, is this installation currently uh, available for public view in the station uh, to answer this uh, question uh, we are yet to find the final place for it and uh, i will uh, very soon get in touch with the triple id team and uh, uh, see to it that uh, it goes to its final uh, place Okay. even i'm equally uh waiting for it cuz i'm okay. uh, keeping it in my custody so it's a big responsibility i know and currently this this uh, you have started somewhere it's in your studio or something yeah it's in my school okay okay anybody any question uh this is guru prasad uh, thanks a lot uh, muli sir uh, for such a lovely uh, experiment with uh, used material the names used there 
re uh, using it as uh, reimagining or uh, uh, revisiting or something like that. Uh, I was wondering, uh, we know you uh, for uh, utilitarian or products which are uh, why you went for uh, installation, uh, which is, uh, I mean, uh, going to go only give visual appeal. Uh, was it uh, that these are condemned materials which cannot probably make a product or uh, you had uh, any other idea uh, of representing it as a installation? Was it a brief uh, by Triple uh, I? Something. I thought. I, I just... Yes, sir. Uh, for me, this was purely a design brief given by the uh, client. It was uh, my way of interpreting uh, how we can uh, commemorate the uh, 50th uh, 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 what founding day of uh, Triple ID. So the frames idea was about utilizing the materials in the uh, right way and uh, to deliver a certain quality. So that was about it, sir. I didn't look at it as uh, uh, that's where I was very clear that I personally do not see it as an artwork or uh, any definitions like that. So it is left to the audience to interpret it that way because uh, uh, by core, I'm a maker. I'm a craftsman. Did I answer your question, sir, Guru Prasad, sir? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a wonderful experiment with uh, transforming the used wood uh, with some laser etching and all that, uh, which brought uh, its own, uh, you know, uh, new stamp. Uh, and transforming it, it's uh, very magical. And uh, I think uh, uh, a group work uh, of uh, using many people, uh, making it happen, um, I think it's a great, uh, great uh, teamwork. Uh, I think uh, there, there could have been a lot of odds uh, which you have not explained uh, in this, but we can see that the, how, what all things you would have managed to make this a success. Uh, thanks we a had lot for exactly 30 this. days to do it, sir. Yeah, I think that's great. A lot of pressure, stress <laughs> on the part of uh, the organizing uh, team and led by you. Uh, I think it's a great, uh, inspiring uh, story for all of us. Thank you so much. Thanks wow. Any, any, any other question? We probably. Uh -huh. can. Am I am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Dinesh Varma. So I just wanted to share my experience. You know, like the day I was there, I was present there when uh, Moodley sort of you know brought in the things. And let me tell you, the entire audience was full of awe. That that what they thought was coming was nowhere near the imagination of what they saw once it was unveiled and everything was put together. The type of uh, thought behind it, the type of textures which were created, the colors and all, but definitely something which, you know, uh, everybody immediately said, yes, this should be something which is permanent. And uh, we are still talking to the Metro to see as to, you know, how it gets a proper place. Because where it was put was something like a public place where it will not be, you know, they didn't get vandalized very soon. So we are looking forward to, you know, something which is more uh, in a semi-private type of a place where it can be put and, you know, it can be displayed there permanently. So I would just say, you know, it was a great work done by Murli and his team. And I would like to congratulate him once again on the job. Great work, Murli. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Dinesh. for the platform, sir. <laughs> Okay, now we are four past ten, and uh, I think if there are any more questions people want to think through and then probably connect with you, they could do it in the forum. Uh, like the way both Guru and Dinesh have summarized this experience, 
I mean, I'll join them along with all of us to congratulate you on putting something like this. Uh, very innovative, very thoughtful, very new, and more importantly, the sincerity and the and the depth with which you have looked at it is, I mean, amazingly commendable. And uh, certainly, we look forward to this being installed. Whatever we will call it, continue. I will continue to use the word artwork. And <laughs> so we will really look forward to seeing it. But I think you have left behind uh, this audience a possibility. I mean, which is, which is, uh, uh, you know, how do you convert? It could be a, just a project that was to be executed. But how you saw that project, how you brought your beliefs into it, how do you got multiple uh, uh, minds to work together? I mean, there is, as I think Guru said, basically there is so much has not been spoken about, but I think as a very perceive, perceive, if you perceive deeply, there are so many things to ponder over how this would have happened and a lot of learning uh, for us to take from. Um, so thanks, thanks Murli. Thanks a lot for doing this for us today. And uh, I wish you all the best for the, not only the installation, but may, for many such projects that you'll be undertaking. And I also want to, Congratulate and thank the team, uh, your own studio, uh, and also those who participated to this. And uh, please share our our, our, our uh, appreciation to them. And um, to all the audience, it is such an amazing thing to listen to. And thanks for joining. And uh, we have, of course, several talks lined up, and uh, we'll get to meet again soon next week. And uh, till then, have a great rest of the week and uh, see you all again. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night.